the pattern we're going to tie today is called a posse bug. Um, my understanding is it's one of the first beadhead flies um, that was created, and it is. I've got it on a size 14 hook and a 764 gold bead on it. I think it's called the posse bug because it's made of uh, uh, Australian possum and. For whatever reason, I actually had some um, Australian possum in my material, and so I thought, I'm going to give this, this fly a try. I really like it. It You'll see it ties up quite a bit like a hare's ear, um, with a few unique aspects to it. So we're going to start out with this um, 0.015 lead. We're going to put quite a few wraps down on the shank of the hook here. That's going to help us get this thing down in the water fast and it's also going to help us stabilize that bead and we are taking quite a few wraps so i'm going to go ahead and break that off using the old friction method do the same with the back side from there we're just going to push all of that lead right into the back of that bead and that's just again going to stabilize that bead for us. I'm just going to use a, a 14 knot um, black thread here and we'll start that right behind those lead wraps and get it secure on our hook and then I'll just slip in here really quickly and cut off this tag end and we're attached and we're, we're kind of ready to go. From here, I'm going to go ahead and take a few wraps up towards the bead, kind of lazy wraps, but this is really to secure the lead in place. Um, I'm not worried about covering up those thread wraps or the wraps of lead here. Um, this will be a dubbed body, um, so I'm, yeah, we'll completely cover those up. I don't need to worry about covering them up with the thread. So I'm good with that. Get that in place, and then we're going to go ahead now and turn to our Australian possum fur. So I've cut off a, a nice little clump here, and we're going to make a, a really short uh, tail, much like we would with a hair's ear. I'm going to hold that on the top of the shank of my hook, and we'll just secure it down with a couple of thread wraps just so it stays in place for us. Then I'll go ahead and take some wraps backwards, just keeping that material on the top of the shank of the hook here as I secure it. Then I'll take a look and see how we're doing for length, and I'm, I'm good there with the length. So I'm going to take this nice ball of um, messy fur here. I'm just going to clean that up, clip it off. So we're going to just take a regular piece of uh, flashaboo here, and we're going to have this go right over the center of the hook, over the um, tail here. I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of wraps just to lock this piece in place on the top. And after I've got this kind of locked in place on the top, I'm going to take this really long other half, and I want it also to go straight over the top of the tail here. So I've got both of those secured down now, so I'm just going to pinch everything, including the tail and my fingers, and I'm just going to go ahead and come on back to where we're going to have the abdomen of the, of the fly start here. And once I've got that, I'm going to come on in with my scissors and I want to cut this flashaboo uh, just a little bit shorter than the tail itself. So I'm going to try to grab these two pieces together. We'll cut those off. And we'll want to keep hold of the tag end um, of what we just cut off here, because that's the next thing we're going to tie in. We're actually going to use that exact same piece of um, flashaboo here as ribbing when we rib the abdomen body of this fly. So I'm just going to get a turn or two on it, draw it backwards a little bit, and I'm going to just take this back again to where we're going to start dubbing our uh, possum dubbing. So much like a hair's ear, I'm just taking this piece of possum and I'm just like picking from different places some little clumps of it out. Um, it's going to kind of end up looking like that. Then I'm just going to kind of mix it um, in my fingers. Uh, the other possum flies I've seen like this, the, the piece of possum is much darker in color than this one. This one is really, um, really, really light. Um, so it's going to give us a really a light colored bug. 
I'm just going to finger dub this on. And again, I want it to be buggy. So I'm not going to worry about getting this incredibly tight. Um, we're actually going to probably brush some of this dubbing out um, as we move forward. So we've got some of our possum dubbing going here. Get, make sure we get a good start right around the back end of our hook there. Then I'm just going to start working my way forward. Um, and we will be building just a tiny little bit of a taper here. And it looks like we're going to go back and grab a, just a hair more. So I'm just finger dubbing on that second helping of, of dubbing here. We'll take this right up behind the bead. We'll have a little bit of space to work with, which is just what we want. And you can already tell how buggy um, this is looking, which will probably clean it up a little bit, but not excessively. So from there, I'm going to take this piece of uh, flashaboo that we put in place earlier, and I'm just going to take um, some fairly close wraps using the flash material coming up the, the body here. That's really gonna make this pop, um, give just kind of that little reflection um, when you're fishing this. So we'll take that right up behind the bead and then we'll go ahead and tie that off a couple of thread wraps over the top of it and I'll take a wrap or two behind the bead which will do absolutely nothing in terms of securing the material but we're gonna take our flashaboo now and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut that off so have our thread attached and I'm gonna come in now like I'd mentioned before um, with a, a dubbing brush presuming I can find it I'm just going to kind of brush some of this out because I, I do want this to be kind of that buggy looking um, pattern. So I'm just teasing out some of the possum hairs here. And you can start to see how it's creating this nice um, kind of puffy um, body here with that nice um, flashaboo rib going through the middle of it. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit and then we'll move on to our next step. So as always, one of the fun things about tying flies is you can make it your own. So you can make yours as buggy or unbuggy as you want. I've got the level of bugginess I want here um, on it. And from here we're going to tie in our, our feather that's going to be our soft hackle. And I'm just going to turn to my go-to. Um, love the Hungarian partridge. So I've got a Hungarian partridge uh, feather that I've taken off the skin and we're going to prepare it by stripping off the fuzzies. So you've got the nice bare stock on the bottom. So once I've got that feather prepared, what I like to do is put them into like some hackle pliers like I have here. Then I'm going to wet my fingers and I'm going to stroke some of these fibers backwards. And then I can go ahead and release that from the hackle plier. And that gives me a nice little uh, triangle-ish tie-in point here. We're going to go ahead and let our thread go counterclockwise so it'll kind of wrap backwards and not over the top of that bead. And I'm just going to take a few wraps to secure that uh, piece of Hungarian partridge hack in, in place. A couple of wraps in front and behind. I'm just going to go ahead and turn my vise and we're going to tr trim out the excess from the tip of that partridge feather. Now with that done, I'm just going to go ahead and grab another set of hackle pliers and I'm going to grab hold of the stem. Um, you want to be somewhat gentle. You'll easily pull this right out of place, but if you pull too hard. And I just want to stroke some of these feathers, uh, fibers backwards and we're going to start building our soft tackle. And it's really only going to be a turn, um, maybe a two turns at most. I can already see some are going forward, but 
that is something that we will be able to fix just fine. Um, so there we go. I've got a couple of turns on that. I want to lock that into place, so I'm going to take my thread over the stem that I still have in my heckle pliers here, just to lock that stem into place. Just like so, and then I can just go ahead and release that from my hackle plier. And from there, because I don't want this thing to be a, a complete porcupine with something that big sticking out of the end, I'm going to come in and trim that pretty tight. It's about like that. And so from there, that's where we can really, you know, if, especially if you've got quite a few of those fibers that are out of control and are going forward this is where you can make sure you get them all kind of heading backwards is right here just kind of pull those fibers backwards while you take some turns over the top of them and then we're just going to build up a small kind of a black collar here right behind the bead now that i've got that just a little bit of a collar in place i'm just going to go ahead and grab my whip finisher we'll just take a few turns with our whip finisher here Maybe do that one more time. Go ahead and release that from my whip finisher. Now I'll turn my hook a little bit. I've got the cutting thing on the end of my cut, my whip finisher. This dis disattach, I guess. I just created a new word. Detach our thread. Um, We'll put a little speck of varnish um, right right there and it'll help secure those thread wraps down so they won't go anywhere. Um, but that's it. Um, a wonderful pattern and hopefully if you tie a lot you, you can see the, the hair's ear here. Um, it really does look a lot like a hair's ear um, with a soft hackle. Um, but we're tying it with possum, the posse bug. Give it a shot.